Thank you, Steve. Two sides with plenty of previous going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a proper test match. It, it's what the World Cup is all about. And for the next two hours, you can put your quarter-final permutations to one side and judge for yourself just whether New Zealand or France have what it takes to go all the way and become world champions. That is the greeting for the two sides. No more posturing, no more what-ifs or whens. It's the night when, for the first time, the current all-black vintage will learn if they truly have what it takes to emulate the team of 87. And what a special occasion it is for Richie McCaw. Well, after the mixing and matching of the first two matches, comes what must be very close to Graham Henry's strongest available lineup. Kieran Reid is still injured, but apart from his absence, all the combinations are there. Weppo and Carter at 9 and 10, Nono and Smith are the centres, it's Whitelock ahead of Ali Williams at lock, and Israel Dag at fullback. 11 out of the France 15 are probably what Marc Lievremont sees as his first choices. Three of the four who aren't are in the front row. Nicolas Mas is injured, so his place goes to Luc Ducalcon. Dimitri Sharjevsky starts at hooker, while Jean-Baptiste Fuchs is preferred for today at least to Fabien Barcella. The interesting call though, of course, Morgan Parra at 10. Two locks on the New Zealand bench, injuries in the back row will be covered by Sam Whitelock's versatility. For France, the selection of Parra is probably more about giving the specialist fly half Francois Tranduc a sharp reminder. Test cap at the Cathedral of New Zealand Rugby.
Blacks bogey side are primed and ready to go. Well, alongside the England's World Cup final scrum half from four years ago, Andy Gummersall. Andy, is there anywhere France might have the edge here? Well, I agree with Lawrence in the studio. It is a big forward pack that France have picked. They will feel angry, they'll feel disrespected by the fact that the New Zealand press called it a B team. They've got to win the physical battle. This Rugby World Cup seems to be about the battle of the back rows. If they can emulate Ireland's trio, in particular holding New Zealand up at the, uh, the ball carries, creating slow ball for New Zealand, then they really do have a chance. Two painful World Cup exits at the hands of the French. Will this be the All Blacks Night of Atonement? Kickoff is next. The referee tonight, Alan Roland. Three caps as a scrum half for Ireland in the 90s. Now more than 50 as a referee. The All Blacks won the toss. They're playing from right to left. It's eyes down for a full house. And it's going to be Morgan Parra wearing 10 to get us underway. Let the battle commence. First catch, a comfortable one for Kano. There's Wepu to Carter. The Centurion straight into the action. The ball has gone outside the 22, so Israel Dag can't go directly for touch. He finds Parra. Here's the big ball carrier, Louis Pickamar, man of the match six days ago in Napier against Canada. Parra getting wrapped up by McCourt for the second time in this tournament France wearing white they did so on the opening weekend against Japan that was Pate Parra with plenty of time puts up the high ball Aurelien Rougerie is after it that really was superbly claimed by Israel Dag. Almost with every touch of the ball lays claim to that 15 jersey. There's Whitelock. Whitelock, whose brother, already a World Cup winner this year with the under-20s in Italy. A little grubber through. Maranon who's after it. Well covered by Vincent Clare. Clare with a hat-trick six days ago. To Yashvili. A tremendous break from Parra. The little chip over the top. Well, I think the referee decided that Parra was looking for that. And between you and me, in that respect, he does have previous. Something that France do very well is switches of direction, switches of play. And I thought McCaw would have been happy with that start because he got hold of Parra. But it was actually the offload early 
Yashvili changing the point of direction and para. Early doors, just get it deep and put some pressure on. A real intriguing start. So, Dmitry Sharshevsky getting an opportunity here to start. Only his 52nd cap, the man from Stade Francais. Finds Bonaire. Bonaire offers an extra dimension in the lineup. There is Sharshevsky. They're inside the New Zealand 22. He's really just directing Luc Duquelcon. He's picked up by Nale. There goes the captain, Doucetois. If you're looking for omens, the first time that Thierry Doucetois captain this French side was at Dunedin when France won. That was two years ago. There's Sharshevsky. Drop goal coming. Yashvili back to Para. Oh, and it's back off the upright. Oh, and pick them all is through. But the ball went forward. The referee playing advantage. Chance to break here for Nonu. Nonu had Smith alongside him. Well, three minutes gone. It's been a dramatic start. <laughs> Carter with the left foot. Looks up, sees some space. Back goes Claire. Only really gave himself one option, and that was an awkward one for Carter, but it was a good kick. Good play by Claire. That's good experience shown by him. He thought, I'll kick it straight away, but no, I'll have a little run. But here's the drop goal attempt. It was it was plotted quite early on, but how <laughs> unlucky was Pickamol's there. And then all of a sudden it's turned into a counter-attack and good defense there from Rougery. He'll be happy to get in and get his first hit on Marnonu. There was all this talk in the newspapers in Auckland on Tuesday or Wednesday when Mark Lievron picked the side. Talk of the B team, none of it really. Back there from Bonaire, there's Yashvili. What a start it is by the French. They're doing things really simply. Very direct. You want to keep New Zealand honest early on. Forward goes Papa. Let's pick a mole again. Always misses. The first tackler, doesn't he? Ashville, Para. There's Rougerie. What a comeback it's been for Rougerie. In the final league game of last French season, he broke and dislocated his ankle. They've got numbers here, France. There's Para again. Doucetois, the captain, out to Van Sancler. The cover's there. At least three black jerseys. The Para into the more conventional role. Switching with Yashvili, Yashvili with a cross kick. Will it find its man? It does! Oh! And Damian try. well he appeared to have done the hard work. And then he spilled the ball, but the referee... Well, is uh, try hurt? Alan Roland has called the knock-on. Corey James hurt as well, that was... just the sort of start France need, and showing the versatility of both Yashvili and Para. Swapping positions, giving the width. Was it a tackle? I mean, it's hardly a tackle in the air. I mean, what can you do there? A few boos from the French crowd, but it could well be a penalty. Roland is a stickler for detail, but I think in the end, Corey Jane did very well. And that's it's so useful having try out wide because he is a tall man. So great tactics early on from France. Time back on, please, Graham. Well, the two assistant referees, George Clancy and Carlo Damasco. George Clancy took charge of the opening game here 15 days ago now. It's Clancy over there who could have supported his fellow Irishman, but he decided there was nothing wrong with the challenge. Well, Piri Wepu here with a put in. see on this near side here the arm of Tony Woodcock going straight down well this is how French rugby is defined in the scrummage what a place to do it here five meters out from the all-black line we've been going six minutes at Eden Park still no score the pressure coming Ball. entirely from France. 
It's all a bit untidy, and it's picked up by McCourt. The pragmatic option from the captain. Looks like the course playing eight, he was the one carrying. Well, we did hear that there may be one or two switches there in the set piece. Adam Thompson just having his second start as a number eight for the All Blacks here. That, of course, is not his regular role. And we thought.